in a couple of months, precisely in November, Kogi and Bayeser elections will hold. The incumbent governor, Yaya Bello, is seeking a second term if he gets his party seated. But there are numerous candidates eyeing that seat. A rare of the lot is a woman who contested for the senatorial seat of Kogi Center on the platform of the Social Democratic Party. She's uh, one of those who are seeking to be governor of Kogi State. Tonight, uh, we highlight some of those individuals seeking office. She's a lawyer and she's Natasha Akoti, was a member of the ruling APC at some point before she left. She contested uh, to be senator in the Kogi Centra. She joins me from Abuja Studio. We we'll briefly have some conversation with her on ambition. Thank you so much, Natasha Akoti for joining us on the program tonight. Uh, you are in court, and I understand that today you are closed your case uh, in, at a tribunal when you're seeking to become the senator uh, for Kogi Centra. But again, the ambition to becoming a governor has cropped up again. How do you hope to balance that? First off, uh, thanks for having me in the studio, and good evening, Nigerians. Indeed, I'm actually at the tribunal trying to reclaim the mandate which was stolen. Um, and today, we rounded up the defense. So in a few weeks, we hope that judgment will be given and hopefully in my favor. And, um, but with regards to the gubernatorial aspiration, I'd like to make it clear that just yesterday, the good women of Kogi State, under the ages of women supporting women, actually purchased the forms, the forms for me. And uh, what I made them understand is this is actually a surprise and a humbling experience. And I would require some time to conduct some consultation. As of today, I had discussions with my family, my children, and my mom, and they seemed okay with it, appreciating the risks ahead. But um, I would just need to take the consultation a bit further and broader, meeting the relevant stakeholders across other political parties in Kogi State and across the nation because if we know full well, Nigeria has not produced a female elected governor and this is going to be like a paradigm shift and a change in our democracy and so it's going to require quite a number of political interests that need to be consulted and so far I have not made up my mind, I have not yet accepted that <laughs> but I do appreciate the fact that our women were able to boldly come together and take the bold step of luring me in. So you have not concluded uh, plans and you're, you're still thinking about uh, your, the ambition of becoming governor? I'm um, not concluded yet. Like I said, I, this is a form here I've not filled yet. I'm still consulting. In the next few weeks, I'm going to quickly meet with um, stakeholders. Well, should you pick the form? Should you decide... Uh, you ran on the platform of the SCP. You were formerly in the APC, but now that you are here in the SCP, and you did say at some point that you are confident of winning at the tribunal, but first and foremost, yes. why do you hope, or why do you want to become governor of Kogi State? Okay, let me just speak generically on, uh, as, a city, as an indigen of Kogi State. Kogi State is a young state, with lots of potential, but we've been quite unfortunate with the leadership, except for the past few governors who have made some tremendous positive impact. Um, we have, right now, Cookie State is one of the poorest, irrespective of the fact that it has 32 solid minerals that are on tap in commercial quantities that can actually transform the state into being an industrial hub for the country. So also, Cookie State is violence ridden. We know what has happened in the past few months. There's been a lot of kidnap situations. The um, workers have not been paid their salaries. It's the, the private sector is practically non-existent. The, the SME is so down. And the state is basically extremely, extremely poor and is in their need of good, smart, creative and innovative leadership. So um, you are asking me a question that if I have already made my intentions known to the governor, so basically I haven't, but if I am to, if I am to contest, then definitely I'm going to focus on promoting the principles of social justice, where peace, unity will reign, where peaceful people with, from their diverse ethnic groups will live 
in harmony and we will be able to tap into the strength of our diversity and also strengthen the economy of the state whereby it will no longer be a state that depends on federal allocation, rather it will focus on its strength, the economic strength, and generate a lot of revenue, create jobs, and even contribute its quota financially to the federal coffers. That's what I would want Kogi State to be, one of the wealthiest states, the industrial hub of the country. But like I said, <laughs> this and more we could discuss if and when I make up my mind to actually contest. But as of today, I am still deliberating and consulting. But for me, like many other Kogites, I would want to see a young, vibrant, and prosperous state. Um, we are very gender sensitive in China's television. We, each time we see women in politics, uh, we are always wanting to bring them under the spotlight to give them the opportunity to say what they want to do to change the narrative in the Nigerian political landscape. So seeing someone like you, uh, the, the thinking is that you are taking the bold step to say you wanted to be a senator. This time around, we understand that some women got a form for you uh, to becoming a governor of the state. Beyond all of what is happening in Kogi State, a lot, a lot of people, we know what the politics of Kogi State is all about. Bayelsa State is also another state that has some, some, uh, somewhat a volatile political uh, atmosphere. And each time Kogi State, Bayelsa State, River State, when you mention politics in this state, we know the kind of violence that have emerged. Are you ready for this kind of game? I am ready, like I said, if and when. You see, the um, strength of a woman, the strength of a woman has been greatly undermined in Nigeria. For some reason, we seem to focus a lot on the muscular strength, the physical capabilities, forgetting that leadership actually requires some intellectual capacity. And um, women are around the world who have assumed leadership uh, positions of authority have done tremendously well. And um, I would like, if this decision were left for me alone, I would say yes, let me just go in and at least break this glass ceiling for all Nigerian women. Because if you look now in Nigeria, uh, going by the um, European Union electoral, uh, the 2019 election report, submitted by the EU observers, you will see that the level of female participation in politics has dropped down to like 3%. During um, um, President Jonathan's regime, it was actually 5.6%. And that tax Nigeria amongst the lowest countries in Africa w with regards to women participation in politics. Rwanda taxed the top with 68%. South Africa, 34%. Nigeria right now today is just 3%. So yes, if I would, if this decision to contest is solidly, solely depends on me alone, I would take up on that challenge and do it not just for myself, but for every Nigerian woman alive today and our unborn generation, because Nigerian women have contributed a whole lot in shaping and forming the democracy today. We actually make up over 70% of the voters. We actually contribute taxes. We run the SMEs at the grassroots. We are professionals in the corporate field and in the private sector. So we definitely should have women aspire to become governors, presidents, and vice presidents of this country. So yes, like I said, um, all of that, probably I will have to visit your studio more um, to discuss this when I make up my mind. But I am not scared of the challenges ahead. I am strong at heart. I have conquered the fear of death <laughs> long before, right during my advocacy for the arrival of Ajakuta Steel Company, which is still very dear to my heart. And if I decide to go, that would be one of the very first projects that I would like to tackle and have Nigeria reposition itself as a frontier driving the industrialization of Nigeria. Thank you. Natasha Akwoti, uh, should you decide and make up your mind? Uh, because what we got before now is that you are actually in the race. But should you decide, uh, some facts are coming in now, but should you decide in the nearest future, do let us know and uh, try to come back and let us know what your ambitions are for the people of Kogi State. Thank you so much for coming on. Natasha Akwoti, SDP well. Governorship Aspirant in Kogi State. All the best for you in the coming months. Well, we, some of the stories will fall in for you. The former governor of Imo State, Rochus Okorocha, is not happy with the situation, the selling off of some of the properties linked to him. It is there. Uh, uh, some of the documents uh, 
he supported the kind of television that there is a subsisting court order. However, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, through his acting head of media and publicity, Mr. Tony Orilade, had confirmed in a statement that his Enugu Zona office on Tuesday traced and marked some properties traced to the former Imo State Governor, Owelo Richards Okorich, as those of his family members and cronies. And the marking of the properties, according to the EFCC, is a fallout of their painstaking investigation and the result of the failure of the suspect to honor the commission's invita invitation for questioning on the property of their accusation. This is some of the stories we're following for you. But we'll take a break. When we come back, we get deep into the conversation. The chamber here is open. And the proceeding will begin on the Senate uh, nomination, the Senate screening of President Buhari's uh, ministerial nomination. What do you make of these people? We dissect these issues for you. My panel is ready. Join us again. 